Hi everyone, KGF Chapter 2 releases on 14th of April and I'm sure that all of you are as excited as I am. Um, with me today, we are going to be in conversation with two of the most important uh, people in this process. The creator of this wonderful, wonderful world himself, Prashant Neel, is sir. here with me and the rocking Rocky of mm -hmm. the film, Yash, uh, is here. So I just thought we'd sit and have a little bit of a chat about the genesis of KGF, you know, like what, how you got into it, what got you excited about it, your influences to make this movie, to create this world, and so on and so forth. So um, I think to start with, I mean, I've been, wherever I've gone, uh, I must share with you, I did mention to Yash as well earlier, that there is such an excitement about this film. And there is also, I must share one disappointment, because people who are now excited about KGF 2 are disappointed that some of them didn't go to the theatre to watch KGF 1. So they're disappointed about that. But I guess they'll make up for it now. How do you all feel on this, uh, at this time when the film is just about to come out to the world? We are excited, you know, it's uh, eight years of journey, Prashant. Eight years. Yeah. Eight years since the inception. Yeah. So we have been discussing about it. We are living in that world for a pretty long time. Yeah. And then chapter one gave us that confidence and uh, that has given us that kind of uh, strength where we can you know, take it to next level. Mm -hmm. And today we finished all our work. Like yesterday he was uh, kind of disappointed that he has finished it. <laughs> so probably he wanted to be in that world itself. So that's why he was not part of our promotional activities also. He was very busy with the post-production. I think even now he's sitting and actually thinking about his anything <laughs> left to be done. <laughs> he's like, I would much rather be in some post-production. How are you feeling? Exactly. Yeah. That will be his mindset. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm marrying my daughter off and, and sending her away. <laughs> <laughs> When we started this, I never imagined that we're going to be in a place like this. Honestly, mm -hmm. I think the only person who had that vision was him. <laughs> and he kept driving us to do this in the way that we had written it. Usually, it simmers down when, it, when, when you know, you're making only a Kannada movie. Mm -hmm. You get only this much budget. Mm -hmm. And then when you think about it and say, okay, I wanted this visual, but can we achieve it? Mm -hmm. And he's, he was there from the beginning telling us that, you know, don't worry about it. What you have written should come out. Yeah. And somehow we achieved that. And today, budget is not a constraint at all. Mm -hmm. Just the whole hype and enthusiasm around the project. And somehow, he, we shielded ourselves from that all these days. But now that, you know, we are out of it and, you know, we are coming finally towards the release. Yeah. Now it's hitting us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Have we made the product to what people are expecting because everybody will have a different version of what KGF should be, mm. uh, the chapter two should be. Mm. And for us, you know, we have kept it as, as the purest form. What we had written yeah. initially is what we are, what we have executed right now. True. So we don't know. You know, but I must tell you that, I mean, of course, we saw KGF one, um, we knew KGF two is happening. But even as a, a kind of an insider on the project, my mind was completely blown when I saw the trailer. Yeah. Because <clears throat> like you're saying, I mean, of course, everyone creates a film in their own head when they know a sequel is coming. But I think what you all have done visually for now, I mean, of course, the story people will see and they will enjoy when they see it. But visually what's happening, I think is far beyond what was I think anyone could fantasize yeah. of or or expect so I must give you a lot of credit for that because it's blown people away visually that aspect of excitement is taken care of you know now Thank you. Uh, so I, I definitely um and when you started KGF you were mentioning earlier when we were sitting here and talking you said in 2006 was when this idea kind of first yes. came to you so uh when did you and and Yash kind of like start putting your heads together and saying this is this is what we should do it's almost like destiny. I know it's, I, I'm, we're talking like lovers right now. <laughs> it is sort of like destiny uh, no. that in 2012, I, I, somebody asked me to watch one of his movies. Mm -hmm. I hadn't watched his movies. I knew that he was very relevant at that point of time. And that movie was called Googly. Mm -hmm. So I was still filming my first movie. And when I watched that movie, I said, wow, you know, mm -hmm. here is somebody that is going to be big. And I, I loved his acting, mm. his his magnetic personality on screen, something that I was drawn to immediately. And I and I mentioned it to him also. 
and he watched Ugram. That was my mm. first movie, and I was blown. Yeah, and he <laughs> and he liked it. And the strangest thing happened. My producer asked us if I had a line which was as raw as Ugram mm. was, and I just told him one scene. There's this just one scene from the movie, you know, where there's this first time that Andrews comes to Mumbai, mm. to Bombay, mm. and uh, he asks uh, for Rocky, mm. and he gives him this uh, very okay. arduous job of going and uh, killing Garuda. Yeah, that was the first scene mm. that I narrated to him. I I didn't narrate anything else from mm. KGF. I didn't even have the title. Title right. K KGF was a very loosely based title, mm. and I mentioned it, and he said who. Who do you think will play this? I said, yeah. Yesh. Mm. That was the first name that mm. came to my mind. And the next day, he was sitting in the office in front of me, mm. and he heard a little bit of the line. I don't know what excited him from that point. He said, "We are doing this," <laughs> and we haven't. So what was that? He saying, "I don't know what excited him." No, initially, uh, I saw his uh, Ugram ka trailer. Mm. Uh, Murli was a dear friend, mm. uh, so that Murli was the hero in his film. Mm. He came to me with the visuals and for the promotional this thing. Mm. I saw and it, I'm like, whoa, mm. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it looked like a, a Hollywood film or a western mm. this thing, and I'm like, wow, who's this guy? Mm. And then I loved it and I just gave a honest uh, this thing feedback, and then I attended his premiere. I think I saw the film and I was like. I fell in love with his work, craftsmanship, mm. and the way he uh, had control over all the department. And I was like, "Wow, this guy is something else." Mm. Likewise, I thought this guy will be big. Mm. And then uh, Karthik went and approached him. I was not aware of it. Right. Uh, then Vijay sir uh, told, "Okay, thara, uh, there is one uh, director." You, I said, "I love to listen mm. to this. This thing is a fantastic director." And mm. we all sat together. And then he narrated a script. <laughs> I don't know whether uh, I can tell this or not. Of course, you can. <laughs> if you listen to his uh, narration, if he had not done Ugram, I'm sure many of the people would have rejected uh, <laughs> his film. <laughs> Having now, I can talk about that thing because yeah. the whole world knows what he's capable of. Hmm. But at that time, his narration is—it was so, you know, pathetic, I should say. But I could see that uh, fire and intention, and he was very clear. Hmm. It's like he was not able to communicate. I think to communicate, he hmm. needs one camera. <laughs> and few actors and yeah. big setup yeah. and all of that. So I just uh, heard this thing, and that was a story. And in that story, mm -hmm. this whole KGF part was the smallest. I think it was a very small part. Right, very small. And it is such huge thing. Mm -hmm. Trust me when I say this. When mm -hmm. people are talking about KGF and they say it's huge, massive, and yeah. all. Yeah. I said, did you say the illegal mining and all of this? And I said that's a fantastic point. Mm -hmm. Why are you putting everything into one? I think this itself can become mm. one. What is it really? It's in, yeah, everything is so nice. Whatever you're right. talking, there are like so much in one. Mm. This thing, and then he said, "Okay, let me uh, think about it." Mm. And then, of course, he would have had his idea, mm. but I got to know that uh, whatever he has in his mind, mm. I know it. I think uh, we generally discuss. It's like an, on another level. <laughs> wow. So the KGF, what people are enjoying, this country is celebrating. That is the smallest part in uh, the narration. What he gave. Wow! Wow! Am I right? I yeah. think so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, so when I see uh, like the way you are speaking now, and when I see the film, there is this synergy that happens between a filmmaker and an actor, and like I, this movie especially, it kind of takes me back to that angry young man <laughs> kind of space. You know, and there was such there. I think it was more the writers. You're also the writer, of course, but not the filmmaker per se. But there was an extension of the creator into the character. You know, you actually couldn't almost on some level, you didn't know whose angst is playing out on on screen. And I feel that when I when I see this, I mean, as chilled out and as relaxed, you know, as you are, is there inherently this kind of like a a, a fire that you notice maybe in him, which you're saying you see in his work when you saw his work, it blew you away. But it reminds me of of that time, and it reminds me of those films and the way you've created this character, larger than life but relatable. You know that's very important. You can't get so larger than life that the audience Nobody has no connection it. with you. 
और वो मतलब इतना कुछ कर सकता है इंसान की मतलब तो ऑल दैट इज रिटेन यू नो सो इज देर एन इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ दीज मूवीज ऑन यू ऑन यू you know the the films of the 70s the primarily the 70s i would imagine when we had this first burst of the angry young man and the the big action hero i think he'll be able to tell that <coughs> i think you the you, you answered uh, everything in your in your question itself zyada bol gaya no so yeah the 70s ah. basically uh, one man amitabh bachchan mm. he shaped the way i thought about cinema mm. the one thing that 70s did and what shole did was to tell the indian audience the indian community mm. that you can make a hollywood movie in mm. india with indian emotions mm. that is something that stuck with me for a very very long time mm. i didn't think i was going to make kgf this early in my career uh, you know in my second movie but that is something that always stuck in my head that you can mm. tell a movie you you can tell a story which mm. which is much larger than life mm. yet the one thing that is very uh, similar in all of these movies that hollywood makes also is the human emotion mm. the basic human emotion is yeah. very 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 critical for them also the way yeah. they treat their characters you know that these characters are here but they're probably in a situation which is far more graver mm. and in an and in a setting which is far more fantastic mm. so that's something that uh, stuck with me my influence basically comes from that era wow. the 70s and you i've seen a few hindi cinemas mm. and uh, of course like all uh, action hero films i've watched mm. but after uh, we came together and he introduced me to a lot of those 70s ka mm. thing and emotions he used to always give examples of a particular uh, emotion what they had captured then but for me it's mostly from life mm. you know what i would uh, when we were in a script discussion i would love to share my experience or my point of view mm. plus that cinema this thing all of that i think life itself uh, if you properly tap it there are so many layers so many emotions where i would have gone through so many situations where i want to be a angry uh, you know angry young man kind of uh, this thing or rebel in uh, certain situations plus his uh, i think it it will all come together mm. and uh, he has seen a similar kind of struggle in his childhood mm. that's what i've noticed when we discuss i think that makes who you are mm. you know the situations what you're put in and uh, the kind of experience you go through yeah. with the people around you being very sweet when you are good and then those kind of things we we try to crack those yeah. and yes but cinema gives us hope for me cinema has to give hope yeah Uh, you know a hero can tackle any kind of situation mm-hmm. with all those things we tend to believe that yes we can do and sometimes belief system is very crucial mm-hmm. uh, if i had not believed that i'll be an actor yeah. i don't think anybody will will think uh, on behalf of me yeah. <laughs> so i have yeah. to do that yeah. so that's the way i look at it but yeah coming together his experience and my other uh, thing we all kind yeah. of come to a mid ground i guess right So I, I want I want to tell you yeah, one sure, one uh, story to tell you just how yeah. what consequence the 70s had on me. Mm. So we I was over here in this same hotel three years back, mm. and uh, I was about to check into the hotel, mm. and I saw somebody, and I dropped my bag, and I ran, mm. and I said I want a picture with you, mm. and everybody around me were wondering who this who this man was. Mm. I took that selfie and my hands were shivering when I was taking the selfie. Yeah. That was Ramesh Sippy. Mm. That is yeah. the only selfie that I've ever taken in my life yeah. Yeah. till date. Yeah. So that the the seventies. You remember that? Yeah, I know. No. Yeah, he's he a, was he's so a, he was uh, really excited yeah, that day. He's a massive influence on like all of us. Yeah, his mm. films that he made. You know, Shole. What is so interesting? Apart from the Gabbar Singh, with the larger, the big characters in the you know the main characters, J. V. Ru. Thakur, Basanti, you remember the smallest to smallest character. Yes. Right? Like you remember Samba who says one line. Yeah. You know Kaliya who actually hardly says anything at all. You know the Ramu Kaka, Ram Lal. It's quite amazing how that film has like seeped into the psyche, you know, uh, of people. And again, I'm sorry. I mean, like I don't mean to get ahead of of the release of this film, but I genuinely feel that there is there is an inherent 
pop culture aspect in this movie. True. You know, there, it's inherently there because it's something new that we are seeing. Maybe you can equate it to in the 70s we saw it, but 70s now is a long time ago. Right. You know, so I feel that there is something new going on in this film. And there is something, there is an inherent pop culture, I don't know where it comes from, you know, which I think is very exciting um, about this movie. So have you, when you write, like, do you ever think of like, what the audience is going to think? Or are you like, is there a balance between like, you know, because like, I remember speaking to, uh, to dad and speaking to Salim uncle. And it was a very fine balance, like of when to give a punchy dialogue, you know, when to say, Mere paas maa hai, for example. Mm. And they knew the effect of that dialogue. They had no effect of the, uh, no idea that Gabbar saying Holi Kabai will become a big dialogue. They were like, that was just one random some, some line that took on a life of its own. But they were thinking from the audience's point of view when they wrote a punchy line. Then they would break away from, okay, well, let's just be true to. So it does that happen to you? Like when you write or when you're performing, are you thinking of that at all? Like what the audience is going to think or what the audience will feel? You want to say something? The, the character itself, we tried, there is no entertainment per se in the movie. Uh, you know, the drama hmm. is built around this one character. And if he's intense throughout, that doesn't give you the sense of uh, entertainment. Right. And that is what here, here, yeah. we are here basically for. Yeah. So, the pop culture that you're talking about is probably the quirkiness that the character brings into this, a hmm. swagger that he brings hmm. into this. And to tell you the truth, I had only the outline for this character. Mm. It was his personality, his own personality that he brought into the movie. Mm. And he said that, you know, I think it, we have to try and make it look larger than life, even mm. with that quirkiness. But we have to make it as natural as possible. Mm. And that it, and all the credit for that swagger is his. You know, he brought no. that element into the mm. whole mix. No, I think uh, he... Uh, he loves his heroes mm -hmm. and he, not even for a fraction of a second, he let me uh, go out of character. Mm -hmm. He has a clear picture, he's, he's giving me credit. But you know, for an actor, if you create such a world mm -hmm. and you create such kind of challenges mm -hmm. and you etch every character so well mm -hmm. and then put you into that situation, mm -hmm. and then he starts writing and we discuss. So I, I kind of feel like, okay, this is the scene. Hmm. Now, as an actor also, I have to think, but at the same time, I'll, I'll be thinking like an uh, audience also. Hmm. You know, are, there is a great opportunity for us to have that kind of theatre moment. Yeah. So, I think like that. Huh. For me, even when I'm performing, I'm performing as if <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, it's sure. like that. Huh. I, I exactly I tell them uh, so many times I uh, tell him saying, okay, now it's like theater. Mein ye ho. <laughs> I'm little like that. You know, I'll be in that <laughs> world. And he also will say we have yeah. one code word. So whenever every shot is finished, he comes and he says, Anna, some is, <laughs> how my fans would react. So that's that means take is okay. Right. So that's right. our code word and it's it's the world he creates mm. and I always feel you're only as good as your film yeah. and only as good as your uh, director's vision. Mm. I may have the talent to do many things mm. but if you don't have a director like him, mm. if he doesn't create a world like that, yeah. then how can I do? What can mm. I do? I always feel cinema is a director's medium yeah. because I come from theatre. Yeah. In theatre, I would have rehearsed for two months yeah. but once I'm on stage, Director will have no control on yeah, me. Correct, so I'll be acting, I'll be taking the audience. Yeah. It's like that. But in cinema, mm. director can make me look strong even when I'm weak. Mm. Even if I'm not performing, mm. you know, he can capture something and back it up with other reactions and yeah. plus music director can enhance that. So mm. I feel I don't take much credit for my performances because it's not just my performance. It's mm. about every technician's input plus the way I enjoy, that yeah. reflects on screen. So for yeah. me, it is like I'm celebrating and they're celebrating me and my performance. Yeah. And my director made sure that in every moment, uh, you know, they were celebrating my mm. performance or celebrating my this thing, uh, yeah. presence. So, so who came up with the I don't like violence bit? <laughs> that, <laughs> Which he came everybody up with seems that. to have loved and <laughs> He came up with that. He came up with that. <laughs> he, came up with that. <laughs> he came up with the first half and I came up with the second half. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said, he said very, I, very I need something here, I, I need something here, you know, I, uh -huh. it has to look like 
<laughs> I, I should say that you know I don't like all these things. <laughs> and he said violence, 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 and he was he was going on and on that morning about that. And then he said he said violence, violence, mm. violence. I don't like. Mm. I said how, okay. How do we? <laughs> yeah. Do this? I, I just said I just put the second half of it yeah. together. Correct. Yeah, but the, everyone has absolutely loved that in the trailer. Yeah. No, see, because it shows that other side, that, that used to be the cheeky side, all the quirky of, side. Yeah, all, you know that kind of. Most of the there. dialogues that he has mouthed in the movie, I know he doesn't like me saying this, it has come from him. The no, idea, see, the expression. Let us clear this point here. This has been running around too much. Okay, I, as an actor, I always, uh, you know, Prashant doesn't need a dialogue to communicate. Hmm. In every film. Okay, like chapter one also, there is that scene in which he was talking. Andrew comes, hmm. and then Andrew will give him an offer, and hmm. that's it. The scene was that, and it communicates. Yeah. It communicates the exact point which cinema has to, you know, yeah. you have to experience while watching. But then I come from that masses, and I tell him, "Give me some line here." Hmm. So this is a time where I have to <laughs> tell something because these guys have, you know, done so much to me, and yeah. people will love those things. And he's like, uh, "Okay, okay, we'll do something." And most of it is on the day of the shoot. We have uh, cracked. most of the dialogues in the movie. We write it when he comes after he wears his costume. He comes there. He looks at the setting and he says, "I need something over here," hmm. <laughs> and that's actually. Uh, time well spent there, you know. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like a waste yeah. of time because it enhances it. And one thing I, one thing with him is, if he doesn't feel the scene, hmm. I know it that we are not going to keep <laughs> this in the edit. Right. He has yeah. to feel it. Yeah. He has to feel the texture of the. I'm a pathetic actor. The, if I'm not convinced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That he is. He convinces. But, right, but rightfully so, also. No? I mean, yeah. No, not necessarily. Then, yeah, Sometimes you know he comes and he says, uh, he says, this scene. Just for my sake. Just for me, please do it. I said, yeah, I will. <laughs> I know this might look silly at this point, but and then I say, this is a lovely scene. Really, you liked it? Then it will be great. That like that is the kind of discussion we right, have. Right. No, but it is most of his his. Without mm. the dialogues, also mm. that scene is a super hit. Mm. But for me, I I've grown up watching that uh, theater moments, no. Mm. So I'm like, hey, yah pe ek dialogue or city mm. bajane ka ye that attitude should be there because he's mm. rocky. Yeah. How can yeah. he let they say, okay, go, chalo, it'll become boring, na. Yeah. So yeah. to add that quirk, we discuss, and he gives it, yeah. So it's <laughs> then he gives too much credit, but that is his thought process also. Mm. But tell now after the success of KGF one. What was for you like the biggest challenge getting into this? Because see, the first one, um, at least from a Hindi film point of view, I mean, I don't know what the expectation was. People appreciated the trailer. Whoever saw it had great <coughs> things to say about it, you know. So it adds a certain, I would imagine, a certain pressure of trying to do something more. Trying. So, what was the most challenging part for you for putting together of chapter two? So, chap, chap there was no chapter one and chapter two when we hmm. started. It was just KGF. Right. So we filmed about a month. Uh, a month into the filming, hmm. I realized that we we were going to spend an an enormous amount of money hmm. for the first half of the movie, hmm. and that's when I came to uh, the producer and I came to uh, Yash and we sat down and I. I tried to explain to them. It was a shocker to them that you know mm. we, that they thought that we are going to split it into two. Mm. So when I told them that we should do this, and the discussion that we both had that day was, you know, the best part of the movie is in the second half. Mm. How are you going to convince that you know you make the first half, which is yeah. good, mm. but make it into an entire movie? Right. So. We brainstormed for about a month, month mm. and a half. We mm. we stopped, stopped filming, filming. Right. and then by the end of that <clears throat> one and a half month, we came. I we came up with a screenplay. We sat down, we went back and forth, and we said, okay, you know, let's take the plunge. Right. But was it only a budget thing? Also, was it in terms of the storytelling that it would become longer? No, it was not. It was. It, it was, wasn't like for me personally. Mm. I don't think if I had mentioned it to them about the budget to him or Vijay sir, mm. uh, the producer. I don't think they would have uh, accepted it that way. Right. I had to tell them that you know there is more space to tell the story mm. in in Correct. two separate uh, yeah. installments. Yeah. So there was no pressure for us when chapter one was successful. Mm. We never felt the pressure even one day mm. that you know we 
there's so much of expectation and we should do mm. something bigger with this because it was already a very very big subject for right, us. Right. So we didn't feel that pressure. And mm. I don't think he feels that pressure even till today, but I feel it. <laughs> I feel it now that Yeah, you were telling me you're not going to sleep now for the next yeah, two weeks. I won't, I won't. <laughs> now now that I'm done with it, mm. it's it's done. I've seen it. I've seen it about 400 times mm. in all the languages mm. and I've lost judgment like most yeah, people do. Yeah, you lose objectivity of course. Yeah, mm. so I, I I feel that today, you know, mm. have we delivered for that expectation. Right. I know that he doesn't feel that. Mm. He's he's always been very confident and he's been right most of the time, mm. all the time. <laughs> so there was no pressure for us. While filming, we were, we, we actually guarded ourselves. We right. knew that there, there was an enormous expectation, mm. but I, not once did we have this, that you know, there is a lot of expectation. We should right. do a much bigger subject because that subject was bigger. Because, but but you, the thing is, when you see it, it doesn't look like an easy film to make. It looks like it's really like taken a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of energy out of everyone to make this film. Where you all have shot it, how it's been shot, the scale of it, the action sequences. So, I mean, like at any point, did you feel like, geez, this is like, it's like a lot or you were just like carried by the, the emotion of the story and it was just propelling no, you forward with I the team. I think uh, mm. we all enjoy that thing. Mm. If it is simple, no, we get bored. That is true. Yeah, so if there is complication <laughs> and if there is too much of drama happening mm. on the day of the shoot, I think that is why we all are here. Yeah. By the end of the day, mm. uh, all the people who are in this industry, we yeah. kind of, I think we like it. Mm. We like things being complicated. I always mm. feel cinema is something, you would have done the homework, you would have written the script, you would mm. have, uh, ha you, you will have the best of the crew. Mm. Producer is ready to give you everything, but still every day it's a challenge. Yeah. It's almost like nature is against you. Sometimes yeah. it, uh, Few actors are not. Uh, I mean, in you know, some in sense, zone. it's like going to war. Nah? Yeah, it's, 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 it's one like mission that. every single day. Every day, yep. and yeah. especially mm. with uh, this kind of vision, mm. imagine the kind of uh, amount of uh, responsibility yeah. he has. But I think once you enjoy that process, or you uh, you get into that zone where you're only mm. looking at what you want. Yeah. Everything else, uh, I don't uh, even. Uh, we don't even think about it. Yeah. But yeah, after maybe uh, uh, you know, finishing the film, when mm. we look at the uh, cinema, then we feel, oh God, that day it was so difficult, and how did we pull it off? Mm. That is there. But while uh, shooting, I don't think any of us are thinking like mm. that. I'll be uh, in my own world. Correct. He will be, and I think he has got a great quality to keep everybody uh, focused and. Mm. Um, he looks like a very silent guy, but he's a violent guy uh, on sets <laughs> and in a nice way. So he motivates and uh, he kind of creates such kind of an atmosphere where everybody's, uh, you know, enthusiastic yeah. and yeah, they're working the for the product. When you see the captain of the ship working yeah. hard, you automatically start working so hard. That's why yeah, that's uh, directors are very, mm. very important yeah. and I think uh, he, as a director, I work with many people mm. and I respect everybody. Every director will have his own way, but yeah, his way, I really mm. like uh, his approach because it's fun and it's excitement, mm. but he takes out the best in everybody mm. without even their knowledge is what I feel. Right. So I want you to be prepared for one question that keeps coming my way. After I made Dawn 1 and Dawn 2, when is Dawn 3, when is Dawn 3? So you can prepare at least from the Hindi film industry. You're yeah, going to constantly yeah. keep being asked about KGF 3. Um, you spoke about something earlier when we were chatting, when we first started speaking about the emotional aspect of the character and the emotional side of this film. You know, because there's one thing which is a character with a gun, which can be exciting, but the reason the character picks up a gun is always more exciting for an audience. If you can buy that, then the gun becomes exciting. Otherwise, it's just an action sequence. Correct. Well said. You know, so for you, like what is the driving emotional thing in this? that people should kind of like look forward to. Like, what are you hoping them, like, you know, like the first one, there was this, the mother, the promise to the mother. I'm assuming, of course, that will play out further in this. But there seems to be so much more going on, you know, in this movie. So how have you like kind of meant, like, what is the emotional anchor, so to speak, of this character for you in, in KGF 2? The way we have left KGF 1, hmm. how, the way we have ended it is, we've, we've spoken about the challenges that Rocky is going to have. Mm. In two. So, you know, uh, he's going to deal with those issues. Yeah. There is the mother issue, which is the most prevalent issue. Mm. I, I cannot uh, take my eyes off that whilst right. telling the story. Yeah. That is something that we had decided from the beginning that mm. the motive 
for why he is the way he is mm. is because of what happened to him mm. when he was when 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 he was a child yeah so we have a strong like you said there's a reason for him to hold that gun yeah because i mean in one sorry sorry to interject because in one it was very strong you felt it through the entire film you know his reason for being there his reason for doing everything that he did in that film there was like a very strong cord you know and um obviously i'm i'm quite certain that it will be in second as well but given the scale of this you know it's it, the balance to kind of maintain that would would have been a challenge i don't think that can be easy because everything gets bigger and at times in the thing of making scale and making bigger action sequences you can kind of maybe lose out you know so i i i just want to speak to you about the challenge of that in your writing uh, more than more than anything else i think we have followed our writing mm. we haven't done anything different the uh, the scale the set pieces you know the action pieces everything is part of the story we right. didn't design even one of them saying that you know here we need a fight mm. i i'm very happy that we did that for this yeah. uh, uh for the, for chapter 2 mm. that we did not dilute anything from the story right that 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 was something that that's great i'm very happy that mm. we got that right yeah uh, you know just to tell just to keep the audience yeah. whistling for a little longer we didn't do anything extra yeah. with that yeah. and when it comes to the emotional quotient it's you know at some point of time that the mother's uh, the promise hmm. you know that he has given that yeah. has to play out and the way it, the way it plays out i think is a very very important segment i i would love to talk to you about this someday after the release hmm. and i would want to be vindicated <laughs> with what i'm saying I'm today i'm sure you will be but that is a very very important aspect hmm. the way that plays out is very very critical for the hmm. movie and without telling you without making you feel that you know you're yeah. watching the same emotion over again hmm. i think we have done our best yeah. to try and uh, uh, preserve that whilst giving you something very fresh and hmm. no no I'm, i'm sure i'm sure will is there anything else you want to share about prashant's working style that people may be unfamiliar with and do you also think about this you know I'll, i'm just, sorry i'll just share something like when i for me from all the directors that i worked with when i worked with rakesh uh, mehra So whenever we are getting into a scene, any scene, like I'm running a race, as Milka, for example, he will when he talks to me about what we are going to be doing in the day, he starts telling me about how we've arrived here from about ten scenes <laughs> before. Mm. You know, so even when I know that I'm running a race, but it suddenly becomes very fresh in my mind as to where the story is mm. emotionally, what the guy is feeling. at this point because i mean that's the activity you're going to run and you're going to run as fast as you possibly can okay. but what you're running for you know what what you're running away from whatever those things may be so is that something that that, that was kind of happening in in certain pieces just keeping your eye on that because i feel that that in any film is the driving force na the the emotion of the story is that something that was yeah but see i never uh, think hmm. about uh, how to tell the lines i always tell this hmm. I just think about why I'm telling this. Hmm. So because as a director, he would have thought of it so many times, and every scene, every dialogue, yeah. he would have put it for a reason, hmm. for a cause. As an actor, my job is to understand why I have to say this, hmm. instead of thinking how, uh, you know, how can I say? I can say it in hundred uh, different yeah, uh, sure. styles, uh, variety. But when you understand that, that becomes easier. Hmm. in my case i think it's other way around i'll be <laughs> thinking ah the scene was like this the scene was like that i think now i have just finished him I mean, i've done this mm. and all of that will be running i, I think uh, that is when i can act yeah. so i have to know every uh, this thing mm. and yeah he also sometimes comes and tells me the importance or what he's expecting uh, that process i don't think i can explain mm. when we come together we, it just ha- happens naturally yeah. but we know each other so well Uh, uh, there was no preparation, basically, in in the sense that it it became so natural to us over the years. Yeah. That yeah. I'd go in the morning and hmm. uh, he'd be getting ready for the shot, and and I'd sit there for two minutes and he'll recollect all the scenes by himself. Right. And he'd say, "Okay, this is this is what we are doing." Yeah. I did. I didn't have to tell him hmm. anything. Okay. Do you know the last scene we did this? Hmm. Okay. That that's that. Yeah. That I think the the yeah. conversation was very minimal to that point. Yeah. and how was it like working with with sanju <laughs> what was that like it was not something that i expected him to do mm. uh, it was something that uh, i it was my dream to have mm. him in in this movie 
from chapter 1 right and uh, of course we were just making a kannada movie at that point of time when when we started off mm. so it felt difficult to go and approach him right. when chapter 2 happened and we went and approached him and he loved the role and mm. i have to tell you the look that he has is completely his he's the one who came up with all oh, the really? references wow. okay. he's the one who came up with all the ideas for it because i told him he has to be mesmerizing mm. and he said what is the, what is the look that you have in mind i said you give me the input sir first mm. because you know he's a legend basically mm. so i wanted to start off f- from his point of view and he said okay why don't we do something like this yeah and and he was he was just like a 16 year old kid mm. right he wanted to do everything <laughs> yeah he said okay come down we'll have a photo shoot <clears throat> and we did all those things and it lo- started looking beautiful mm. and and i i i added that tattoo on his uh, right. you know with the sanskrit wordings yeah yeah and he was so enthusiastic about that you know about his hair mm. and the way he looked he said i'm going to shave off my head and it was brilliant you know he was wow. the legend that he is and after he fell ill also yeah the first thing that when i called him and i spoke to him he said i'm going to be back very shortly <laughs> and it was a very emotional time for all of yeah, us of at that point of time and about 8 months later mm. we said he finally was ready to come and shoot and he said one thing he said don't treat me like a patient when i come to the sets just do the same thing that mm. you're doing that you've done all this time and that was absolutely emotional yeah, for us yeah that's amazing and he made sure that we threw the dust in the air <laughs> <laughs> and he fell on the ground and yeah. he did all those things yeah. and you know yeah. he had a he had a nurse on the set and in spite right. of that he did all those things wow You know the two of you have something in common. The name Rocky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both of them both have debuted into Hindi films with the name Rocky. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. This this is my debut here. Yeah. yeah. Into Hindi films then. For me it was debut. a different uh, this thing. Not everybody can carry that look. Oh yeah, I know. For sure. Yeah. 100%. And, and then uh, for me it was uh, more like looking at uh, that man who has done so much in life, mm. seen so much life. The kind of commitment he had Mm. and uh, the way he was getting excited for small shots mm. he used to go and look at the monitor and say kya lag raha hu main all he used to mm. say so that is like wow mm. you know to have that kind of enthusiasm yeah. after s- doing so much and yeah. seeing so many uh, this thing success or everything in yeah. life yeah. that was mesmerizing mm. and uh, like he said he was completely committed and mm. he wanted to he loved that role mm. and he maybe it looked as if he had missed this kind of cinema Hmm. you know for a very long time and yeah. it looked as if abhi isko marna hai that kind of time and even i am in that zone yeah so it was a fantastic experience wow wonderful wonderful yeah he's a there's a child like quality na to him yeah absolutely which which That's he absolutely true. has yeah which is which is very like kind of uh, contagious when you hang out with him <laughs> that you want to be well i mean thanks so much yeah guys for thank making you. the time and having this chat thank you and for, uh, uh, to all of you watching 14th of april the most important day in your lives please go watch kgf chapter 2